How you doing, everybody? Today we're looking at Star Trek Beyond, the latest movie in the long-running Star Trek franchise, directed by Justin Lin and starring Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, and Carl Urban. So the Enterprise is about three years into its five-year mission of exploring new worlds, seeking out new civilizations, and you know the rest. And while they are docked at a very fancy new starbase for some much-needed shore leave, they receive word of a ship that has been stranded in uncharted space, and the Enterprise is called upon to investigate and rescue any survivors. And their journey leads them to a scavenger named Jayla, a vicious warlord named Krall, and a nasty weapon that could potentially destroy the entire Federation. So I guess I might as well briefly touch upon the first two movies in the Star Trek reboot canon. Um, I like the first movie, and I know a lot of people out there did not, and I get it. That's fine. I thought it was pretty good. I had some issues with it. There were some aspects of the story that didn't make a whole lot of sense, although that easily could have been fixed by just adding some of the deleted scenes back into the movie, but whatever. And, of course, it had the J.J. lens flare everywhere. Yeah, but overall, I liked it. Then came Star Trek Into Darkness, which I also liked, mostly, until they got to a certain point in the story where they just started copying Wrath of Khan wholesale, and that's where it kind of fell apart for me. It wasn't a bad movie, I still had fun with it, just that ending really brought it down. And that brings us to Star Trek Beyond, which is easily the best of the three. In fact, I would go so far as to say this is one of the best Star Trek movies ever. And this probably comes as close to the original Star Trek series as the new movies have ever been. I really like the story for this one, although I probably would have liked it better if the trailers had not spoiled a huge plot point. Movie marketing people really need to stop doing that shit, seriously. But overall, it was pretty good. The comedic moments were actually funny. Imagine that. And at the same time, it was serious when it needed to be. I really enjoyed the interactions between these characters, especially with the big three of Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. They have really nailed these characters in these movies. There was a scene very early on where it's just... Kirk and McCoy sitting down, having a drink, shooting the breeze, and it feels just like something straight out of an original series episode. Though I did think it was a bit weird that the drink they were sharing was apparently stolen out of Chekhov's locker. Dick move there, Bones. You don't steal another man's booze. That's just not right. There's also a significant chunk of this movie where Spock and McCoy are kind of stuck together, and these two play off each other so well and have such great chemistry, and they have some of the more enjoyable moments in this movie, and you can really tell that these two characters, while they may not like each other, they do have a great respect for one another. Although McCoy would probably deny that under oath. And while they didn't end it outright, they did kind of push Spock and Uhura's relationship off to the side, which in my opinion was a good call, because I've never really been a huge fan of that. There's also kind of a big reveal in this movie regarding Sulu. The character is officially gay in this version of the Star Trek universe. Um, I was not surprised by this because I read about it ahead of time. I was a bit surprised to find out that it didn't really amount to anything. When they dock with the Starbase for some shore leave, Sulu comes off the ship and he is greeted by his husband and their daughter, and then that's it. We never really see them again after that. It's like, oh, by the way, Sulu has a family. Well, back to the story. You want to elaborate on this a little bit? I know it's not really essential to the plot, but do something with the character, come on. As far as new characters, we have a scavenger that the Enterprise crew runs into when they're on an uncharted planet. Her name is Jayla, and she starts up a friendship of sorts with Scotty, or Montgomery Scotty, as she hilariously refers to him as. Uh, she was a lot of fun. Total badass. Um, definitely a bit of Ray in this character. I'm, I'm not saying they copied Ray outright. They really didn't, but there's definitely some influence there. And we have Krall, the villain, and this dude is downright scary. This is a really strong villain, and the movie takes its time revealing his backstory, which I really liked, although I did think it was a little weird that all the information on this guy that would have revealed his backstory and his motivations was 
right under the Enterprise crew's noses the entire time. And they just didn't find it until the very end. Like, our heroes, ladies and gentlemen, Starfleet's finest. There was one thing in this movie that I thought was a little weird. There's a moment where Kirk mentions that Starfleet is not a military organization, which... That's debatable, I think. I mean, I know it's perhaps not first and foremost a military organization, but... Those starships sure do have a lot of powerful weaponry on board. Just saying. The cast, they're awesome, all of them. The returning players have fit into these roles quite nicely. They've really mastered all of these characters. Carl Urban and Simon Pegg are especially good in this. And I definitely want to give props to Simon Pegg, not just for playing Scotty, but also for co-writing this movie. Excellent job. And we got Sophia Butella, I hope I'm saying her name right, who plays Jayla. Really liked her, and I hope we have not seen the last of this character. Although, if history is any indication, we probably have. New characters that show up in Star Trek movies don't hang around for more than one movie, usually. And of course, we have Idris Elba as Krall, and what do you want me to say? He's Idris Elba. He's awesome. He's always awesome. This is no exception. Visually, the movie looks fantastic. All of the various makeup effects on the aliens are really well done, especially for Krall, because at first I didn't even realize it was Idris Elba. It took me a while to figure it out. Krall's army of bees, as Jayla calls them, not literally bees, just the way the ships move that resembles a swarm of bees, really well done. Uh, the new Starbase looks fantastic, although perhaps just a bit over-designed. It, it's a bit chaotic, but still, looks really good. And no lens flare! Praise Jeebus! As far as the music, Michael Giacchino's score was once again very good, and they also made use of what this movie calls classical music. Classical in this case, being that it's the distant future, is Public Enemy and the Beastie Boys. I never thought the day would come when I would see a Star Trek movie and hear Fight the Power, but here we are. And we once again hear Sabotage by the Beastie Boys, which was an interesting move, especially since no one liked that scene that featured that song in the first movie. Even people who liked the movie, like me, thought that scene was stupid. But they chose to bring it back, and you know what? This time it actually kind of works, because the song actually serves a purpose. Without going into too much detail, it does have a point. It is an admittedly very silly point, <laughs> but when has Star Trek ever shied away from silliness, really? Overall, this was a lot of fun. Like I said, easily the best of the rebooted Star Trek movies. Very good story, great action, and I highly recommend checking this one out at any price. And that's all I got to say about Star Trek Beyond. So until next time, take care.